Welcome to the McAllister Report. We join John McAllister, top football evaluator, as he shares wisdom and interviews coaches and athletes from around the country. Enjoy today's podcast. Hello, my name is John McAllister, and I have the McAllister Scouting Report, and I also have uh, around the state and Coach's Corner and many things like that with podcasts. Well, today on Around the State, I'm going to talk with a young football player. Well, he's graduated and this year. He's graduating. He's going to move on to Tiffin University to play football. I've known him since his sophomore year in, at Trotwood, Madison, down in southwest Ohio. He started as a freshman. And uh, I really have been impressed with Isaiah. I talked to him a couple of times and we've been trying to get this thing together. So the thing we, unique about Isaiah, he's overcome a very, very serious handicap to, and he's going to go to Tiffin University and play football. So please sit back and meet and listen to Isaiah Evans from Trotwood Madison High School and a very young, very articulate young man. Appreciate him. Thank you. Okay, as I said earlier, my guest today is a favorite of mine. I saw him three years ago, I think, and wasn't in real good of shape, but he's in great shape now. Isaiah Evans from Trotwood Madison High School. How are you? Yes, sir, appreciate you for having me. Uh... Wonderful. I can't complain. Uh, you know, how you, you know, doing? Really good anyway. Nobody, <laughs> nobody listens to you. <laughs> sounds good. Football player, linebacker. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, you just told me you're going to go to Tiffin. You think? Tiffin yes, sir. University. Yes, I committed to Tiffin University this past Saturday night. Uh, oh, okay. We, yeah, we got signing day tomorrow. So. Okay. Yeah, that's really good. I don't know what they have coming in. But that's a good program. I'll tell you, D2 football is much better than people think. Yes. Much better than people think. Isaiah, where did it all start for you? Why football? Why football? Uh, so well, I got a twin brother. So growing up, it was always me and him. Uh, just rough house and playing. Uh, and then we got introduced to flag football when he was probably like four years old. And then that's when I realized my dad said I was always too aggressive in her flag football. So <laughs> it was time to move me up. And then I just fell in love with it. Well, I want my grandson to be more aggressive in flag football. He's only in fifth grade, but he'll be all right. He's a heck of a bowler. So then you went to Trotwood and uh, tell me about Trotwood. How good's Trotwood, Madison? So I've been going to Trotwood since – I started school, so since kindergarten. So ever since I remember, Trotwood was always one of them teams that a state run or a playoff round, like, yeah. I feel like winning was the, was the culture, or it still is the culture. So, like, growing up, I kind of I kind of always looked up into, like, I dream, I kind of dreamed of playing for Trotwood. Yeah, you know, Coach uh, Douglas was there. I go way back. I go way back to those guys when Coach Douglas was there. And then even before him, I think they were on some tough times. And uh, uh, tight end went to Ohio State, I remember, and things like that. Where your school's nice now. And I and, uh, and go. I haven't been there for a while. I, get, I need to stop in and see Coach. Mm -hmm. But I haven't been there. It's good. Trotwood's a really good program. You know that. Really good program. Has there been anybody along the way that's kind of pushed you, kind of said, hey, you can do better? Hey, and not in so much in a crazy way, just encourage you. Anybody like that? Nah, for sure. Uh, pretty much all of my coaches I didn't have from AAU to from AAU basketball to up to high school level with Coach JG and KI. Uh, but like, they didn't let us get – I feel like no coach that I ever had let me be complacent in a way. Uh, <laughs> no, I know some of your coaches. No, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. In fact, the neat thing about Jeff is that he firm but fair, I think. Yeah, for you sure. You know what I'm saying? You got to do what you got to do. 
but mm-hmm. he's, he's good about that and everything. Always going to joke and laugh with you, but make sure that we still implement what we need to do. Yeah. Coach okay. Fred, is a good, he's a good guy. Pretty good football player back in the day. I'm joking with you. Yeah, I heard he was all right. I mean, you know. He was a very good football player. I heard he was. Man, and a tough guy. Okay. (laughs) What about school first? I read where you got a 4.2 or something like that. Yeah, so. Yeah, mom's making you study, I guess, huh? Jesus, somebody is. Yeah, so school out. What's the classroom like? So right now, as a senior, it ain't too many classes. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm an office aide, and I got like random, I got random classes like art and yeah, element. But because I took all my credits as a, uh, I got I got all my credits as a junior. That's taking smart. Some, uh, some college English, some college math. Uh, That's good. Just stacking on, uh, just stacking on, uh, the, what is it? Just stacking on classes so I can get the hard stuff out the way. Did you take college classes then too, or do they offer those at your school? Yeah, uh, I took a couple of Sinclair classes. Uh, oh, okay. This year and last year, and then we got AP classes, so let's go for college credits. Yeah, that's really smart. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Okay, you're graduated. You know, you're done playing high school football. Give me a scrap. I call it a scrapbook moment. Give mm-hmm. me one of the times that you're talking to your buddies 10 years from now and you guys will be, you know, messing and talking. What will you tell them? What do you remember? What's a scrapbook play or two from high school where you just. So felt? it was more of a, so right, right here is more of a, like a, like a practice punishment kind of. <laughs> so one day, one day during, it wasn't even fall camp yet, just summer workouts. Uh, Coach Gill, he has Centerville now. Uh, I forgot what happened, or I think it might have been a rainy. Day. Yeah, it was a rainy day, so I forgot what happened. We got in trouble. We went upstairs. And we did. We had up downs. So usually, we'd, <laughs> usually we'd do like 50, 50 up downs, and then all right, they bring it up. And all right, so then we doing them. We get to hundred. We like all right now. It's about time to wrap it up, man. <laughs> Yeah, I remember he just kept going and kept going. <laughs> like 237 up downs that day. You didn't you didn't uh you didn't push the floor down or anything like that, did you doing all those up downs or not? Hey, we felt like it. <laughs> felt like it. And then right after that, uh, uh coach finally another coach finally come up there. All right, like, come on, now you all right now, slow down. <laughs> we went in there, uh we went in there, ate lunch, took a nap. And then we had we had we went to the Inglewood Hill, the Inglewood Hill. Uh, we used to run that probably about once or twice a week during the summer. Uh huh. And then I think a couple of players was playing during nap time, and uh, they was throwing water. And then the coaches found out. And then, <laughs> and then we was at the hill for like <laughs> after two hours, just running straight, bear crawling, backpedaling, everything. So I think that's one of them. Oh, yeah, we had never. I, but I thought Trout would have no discipline. <laughs> I'm joking right. again with you. I'm joking with you. Okay. I mean, I know, I know, I know everybody. And so, okay, let's talk about let's talk about football. Mm-hmm. What? As you look now, what do you have to work on right now, football wise? So, really, just. Uh, Anything really just adapting, uh, really adjusting to the game, uh, work on work on better angles or properly how to form tackle or take on blocks right now, yeah. So more so, more so, a little bit more technique or more finesse to my game since since I don't have as long as the reach to uh, yeah. to the old lineman or nothing like that right now, so just more finesse to the but game. You'll probably learn that. As you get older and you get in the college level, you know, where you'll learn those things, I think. Mm-hmm. What do you think was a str- – for me, I thought you had to improve on – I call it getting my hips through the block and get to the ball carrier. But mm-hmm. you have such good speed and you're smart enough, you don't want to take on blockers like yeah. the old days. I mean, you want to you want to beat them. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean you're not tough. That just means you got to beat them. 
Yeah, for sure. You got to so, play with a little net. Some guys still think they can square up on the blockers and do You can't. Yeah. <laughs> but what you do, and I watched the film, I watched your film. You have, you need to get a little bit better initial burst. But when mm. you get that second burst, you're moving. You play downhill really well. Mm. In fact, there was a play where you came clear across the field on a pursuit and caught the guy. I mean, you were backside and caught the guy. So I think your speed's pretty good. And it's going to get better. But but and and the other thing you do that I really like is you finish. I mean, when you get there, you finish the block. I mean, the hit. You tackle guys. Now you got to learn to rap more. I know with this situation, but still. You, you just – you are powerful, and I think that's really good. Are they playing you at linebacker? Is that what they want to do at Tiffin? Uh, so uh, right, now, right now it talks to linebacker, uh, but I'm willing to play whatever, of course. Uh, right. Maybe, maybe going in more so like that hybrid position. Uh, right. That's what I was going to say. You know, or play the nickelback kind of thing. Yeah, more of a big linebacker. I mean, a linebacker now. Like and, you'll, and you'll be playing in air and space, so that'll be better too. I mean, you know, you're not 240 pounds or you know six three, something like that. So you take advantage of your abilities, and I think is really good. Okay, and that's why. And I think I think you have, but you're impressive with your your speed. I think to me. I mean, that's kickoff kickoff teams and early and all that kind of stuff because you get down now you get after it. But uh, yeah, I know you know that, but I'm just telling you that. I appreciate it. Telling people to listen. Okay, uh, is there what a certain saying? Like I, I I talk to all the guys. I have cliches and posters and everything else, and I'm 75 years old. Is there? Are there any po- words that you live by? I mean, you know, you you've had a tough situation. We'll talk after a while. But are there any words you live by? So, yeah, uh, I have my own saying that I uh, that I, Super. I came up with. Uh, I, I I learned that it's not over until it's until it's over. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of obvious, and then Coach yeah. Kerry. Coach Gary, he's been saying this, uh, this saying since I was a seventh grader, so I was hearing this since then. So, pain of success or pain of regret. Yeah. So, literally, uh, pain of success. Uh, it's going to hurt putting in work and doing this and that, but later on, it's going to be the pain of success. Yeah. And then pain of regret, and not putting in the work or not doing this. And then five to ten years later, you're going to sit back and regret it. Or Isaiah, you just have to. You just have to be able to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and to survive. And college will be so much different. But I, I mean, at least you have the right ideas and everything. That's mm-hmm. super. Okay, here's a silly question for you. I have three or four, three of them, I think. What <laughs> talent would you like to have you don't have and you'll never get? It can be anything. What talent? Probably dance. Dance? Yeah, probably dancing. <laughs> I bet you can dance, man. I ain't, I ain't good at dancing. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, let's see. When you go to Tiffin, you're committed to Tiffin. What mm-hmm. kind of energy are you going to bring to that program? What kind of? Energy. What kind of you know you're going to come in next year as a freshman? Mm-hmm. What kind of energy are you going to bring? What- uh, really, just I want to push everybody around me to to get to where that I feel the team needs to be or where the team should be at. Uh, just motivating and pushing everybody around me, and so just hopefully motivating people to work harder and push to the limit. Because I know coming into practice and games, uh, I know I'm gonna give my heart. Guy and game, are you you get fired up and 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 get right and stuff like that or not? I I try to. Uh, I think I think it depends on the game, really. Like I know our big games, like Win Woods and Witho, I was I was loud. Uh, I know I was loud giving speeches pregame, but 
most of the time I'd rather sit back and just let everything dial in yeah. and just sit, like let the moment sink in. Yeah. And, and be like, yourself. For yeah. everything, be yourself because everybody yeah. knows the phony guy. Right, because we got players. But just be yourself. And, and guys, and especially when you go to Tiffin next year. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you wish, as you look back, what do you hope that your high school teammates said about you? What do you hope they said about you? They pushed through the limits. Uh, that, just that I, that I, hopefully they say that I was a relentless uh, kid and never gave up when I faced injuries and just adversity on and off the field. Yeah. Just, what about, okay, so that's super. If I came to recruit, if I came to recruit you, I would ask you: Is was there ever a time when the switch came on, when the light came on, when you said, "Isaiah, I got to get my butt in gear. I got to step up." Was there ever a time like that when you knew that you were taking that next step? Uh, for sure. Uh, so this might sound this might sound crazy, but. My freshman year against Alton, uh, I don't, you might remember that game when they had C.J. Higgs, Brandon McDonald, uh, Shed. I was a freshman. I started that game. Uh, I started that game at, at DN. So I'm about 170 pounds going against hmm. Shep, uh, Big Shep. That, he was like a three-star back then. Yeah. But I remember going against him every play. And I feel like every play he was just, just – <laughs> Dominated me probably. I probably got pancake maybe 10 15 times that game. <laughs> so then, after that, like, after that game, the season was over, so I went home and just worked out. Like, then I had a conversation with um, our defensive coordinator, and then he just told me, like, he was a freshman, and he was in the fire, and but that's when it kind of clicked. Like, okay, I was one of the one of the only co I, I was one of the only freshmen playing this year, so. Now I know sophomore year we're expecting bigger things and we were we were losing a lot of guys so I knew that my sophomore year I, I had to step up and become that guy. Yeah. Okay, that sounds so great. Let's talk about you and me for a minute. When's yeah. the? Do you remember me talking to you? Yeah, Springfield. Okay. Springfield That's game. Yeah. Well, I, in fact, you were one of the guys I came to see. <laughs> no, but uh, you know I I remember sitting on the bench with you. And I thought about you all the way home. You lost your hand, okay? And I don't want to go into details about the fireworks, and, and that's not what I care about. Right. But, but you, okay, how long did it take you to recuperate? How long did it take you? I mean, it, you still have most of your arm, but how long did that take you to recuperate? What went through your mind? I want to see you as a person now. What went through your mind when you were doing all that? So really, uh, you got one minute to tell me. <laughs> so, so really, uh, of course, after the night it happened, uh, I was, you know, I was starstruck. Then, you know, yeah. I was, I, I was shocked. Uh, yeah. Well, for heaven's sakes, yes. Yeah, I was, I was scared, but I didn't know, I didn't know what the future held for me at the time. I didn't know if I was going to wake up the next morning or not. Uh, but uh, I want to say the next, yeah, the next morning or the next morning or one, after one of my surgeries in the hospital, Coach Kerry was sitting next to me. Uh, and then kind of like when I first woke up, he asked me how I was doing and all of that. And then I think I, I told him, uh, I told him like, you know, I'm gonna play football again, right? And then he was like, yes, yeah, so he was like, I know you will, and I'm like, this year I will play football again. He was like, okay, now we want to get you ready for your senior year. But I'm like, okay. And I burst <laughs> off because I had a, a knee injury at the time. I was recovering. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No. So it was more so getting clear from my ACL than it was my hand. Uh, of course, my my doctors didn't want me to play that this season, but yeah. I think I pushed hard enough to show them that, that this is what I really want to do. So that wasn't. That's so, that's so huge to me. And mm -hmm. I remember sitting there with you, and I remember saying, you know, well, hang in there. What do you say? But, I mean, you had heard everything, but I I respect you an awful lot. Yeah. I don't care about anybody else, really, but but myself. I, I really did. You, I came away, came home from that game. By the way, you guys you got killed in that game. Nah, yeah. Killed by <laughs> Springfield. I mean, 
<laughs> Man, <laughs> I'm now a little humor there. Okay, it's so good. Tell me one more thing I read about, if you can. What's a bionic hand then? That's what you're going to have now when you're not playing football. You can wear that. Is that right? Is that yeah. what? You're... Yes. Yeah. What, what is it? Uh, the open bionic arm? Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm sorry. Not I'm yet. Sorry. So the company paid. So my grandma found my grandma found out about it like maybe a week or two after I was in the hospital. Yeah. Uh, then they asked me at the time, did I really want it? I'm like, nah, I won't need it. Uh, yeah. I, I just said I, I wouldn't need it uh, just because I felt like I, I knew I would be able to come dependent on my own again. Yeah. And, and so about about a month or two, maybe two or three months ago, my they uh, got back to my grandma, and then they started to go for me. Then yeah. one day I just woke up. She said that the company paid for about ninety five percent of it. Yeah. So, so Isaiah, how does it work then? Uh, I don't, I don't have it right now. Okay, okay. but you're gonna get it eventually. Yeah, yeah, I go go to Florida in maybe two weeks, I think to go pick it up and bring it back home. Okay, because I remember reading uh, where you said it, it, somehow the nerves are with your fingers, you'll be able to use it and everything like that. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's nothing. But it's, it's It sounds like a whole lot, but really it's just senses on my arm, feeling, yeah. feeling how I move my muscles, yeah. and then just react off of that. Now, I, I was, you checked out a, something else, but you said you didn't like the color of it. You know, some, some other well, they don't make African American breaks. They're all white, probably, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking with you, man. You know that. Yeah. I well, I will let you go. I I really really appreciate. It. We finally hooked up yeah, and right. uh, got it done. And you got your phone turned. It looks really good. And I really appreciate you being here. I'm probably gonna. I will come to a game and. Hopefully your plan is a sum as a freshman, but mm -hmm. uh, oh, we, we will talk again, okay? Yes, sir. We'll I sure. promise you that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Yes, I appreciate you. Okay.